But let's streamline your stream. That's the worst pun ever. Stupid. If you want to learn some very easy tips and strategies to organize your sources and filters in OBS, then keep watching because we're starting right now. I get it. Why might you ask? Oh, I already have my stream set up. My OBS is set up and it's comfortable. Why well, feel you? I was the same way. Uh, but then I started adding some other plugins or some other programs that help, you know, viewers interact with my stream, such as, uh, let's see here, such as Touch Portal, where I have some channel point redemptions and chat commands where they can control my OBS. And also I downloaded the move transition. So I set those programs up and realized I needed to streamline my stream. Yeah, I did it again. Stupid joke. All right, well, I'm fascinated with like making things and learning tech. And my goal on this channel is to keep showing you simple ways how you can make your streams or videos look and sound more professional. And most of this, I'm gonna show you how I have it set up on my OBS, so follow along, let's get to it. It's gonna be fun. So I wanna put a little disclaimer in here, but I'm assuming you have some general knowledge of OBS uh, thus far, you know? But if you don't, you should still be able to follow along uh, with the video. Sources are essentially things you want to input into your video or stream. And these might be anything from a microphone, a camera, to your game footage, to whatever. And scenes are where you collect your sources and organize them. For example, you might have a scene for like gameplay, and you might have an alternate scene for gameplay, just in case, you know. And then you might have one just for just chatting, or one like I have here or adjust your YouTube videos or it's nothing on it. So scene nesting for me was, uh, it's pretty game changing and maybe not like Disney's Mighty Ducks game changers, right? Uh, but you get it. So scene nesting really just creating a new scene and using that scene and other scenes, basically turning a scene into a source for other scenes, right? Like scene-ception. You confused yet? And speaking of scene, check this out. Back in the scene days. All right, enough with the jokes. Uh, the best and most useful example of this for what I use it for is camera scene management. And let me walk you through how I do that. So actually what you're watching through right now is I've got three cameras. I've got an EMI, a C920X, and a Canon webcam. Or a, not a webcam, but a Canon Rebel T3i that I use through the EOS utility. And so in that, I created a scene with that. In there, I created the video input device. And from there, I have all my filters. And all I have on it right now is color correction. I could probably put a LUT on, but it's just too crazy. So what you do, in a nutshell again, is you create that scene, title it, your camera, like Logitech C920 or Canon Cam or Canon T3i, whatever, and you make that your camera. In there, you add your source, which is your video capture device, which is your webcam, name that. Then from there, you add all your filters. Then what I did is I created another scene called fake webcam or full cam is what you can name it. And in here, I input my camera devices and so I put this scene, the Canon cam and the C920. You can see that I've got that C920 here. It's running into my fake webcam scene. And then I've also got a group, which I'll get into as another way for organizing your OBS. And I'm going to show you why I did this. Um, and it's kind of fun. So in this full webcam, I have chat or channel point redemptions where my viewers can interact with the stream and change my camera or if I wanted to have overlays just on the top of my camera it would do that so here's the huge advantage of having this stacked that way so when this channel point or chat command is you know typed in by a viewer my side cam activates through touch portal I, I could show you if you'd like to see how I set this up let me know in the comments and I'll put a video together it's actually really simple um, and then if I change from like my game two, it's still there. Or if I change to chat, it's still there as my sideways cam, you know, right over there. And I don't know, it's pretty cool. So that way it's only affecting my camera. All right, so I do this same thing for my full screen overlays like channel point redemptions or chat commands. 
like this. So I'll have this anime zoom that's over my full screen and it doesn't matter if I switch from my different scenes. And I might have this uh, other redemption come up, toasty. Toasty! Yeah, good old things. And actually it doesn't even affect if I redeem my side cam. You could see how it's still over everything. Like when I switch, still on top of everything. Let me show you how I do this. So it's actually ridiculously simple. So I create the scene called ZZ Triggers, or you could call it Triggers, but I like it ZZ, so when I try to choose it, it's like on the bottom of the alphabet. Um, in here, I put all my media sources, and that's my anime zoom, so if I redeem that, you could see how it gets turned on, but it's not in this scene. So it gets turned on uh, from touch portal and then it has a timer to automate it and turn it off. And then what I do is in my main game, I have that on the very top. In my mid game two scene, I have that on the very top. On my middle chat, I have that on the very top. So you could see that when that is activated, it pops up over it. Pretty cool, pretty simple. That's all done just by scene nesting. Another great use for scene nesting, just to keep beating this horse, you know, is uh, what I use. I use it for our podcast, Dear Downloads, where um, I host it with my buddy Luke, and uh, we definitely have guests on. And what we do is we record it through Discord on. So I have OBS running, and I do a window capture of, of Discord with him in a video chat. What I do is basically just window capture the Discord chat and create different scenes one is luke one is the guest and then i add those scenes into another scene for our overlay let me show you kind of that as an example so you could see here i've got xd guest and what i would do is just have uh, these are images i have the discord video which is a window capture device i think i said browser did i say browser no it's, yeah i said window capture so it's a window capture device and I have Discord video and all I do is I just trim it to that camera on Discord chat. I've got another scene called X. I like to call it just, it's an architectural drafting thing like an X ref. But I call it X, Dear Downloads, Loot Cam. All here, it's the same source. It's the same source, Discord video, Discord video. It's just how it's trimmed and cropped. And then when I go to the two of us, you could see I've got my mic, I've got my computer audio. I've got our background, my cam that I always use and everything. I've got the C920 in case I want to switch it. We we're doing a thing where we we're doing a product review. And you can see I have him referenced in here. So this is just the two of us. If we have a guest, I go to my scene. You can see it's our background, computer audio, my mic, um, our background logo, my cam, his cam, the guest. And then this is my overlay to separate the three of us. Let me drag this down so you can kind of see. So what are groups? Groups are, they're, they're nice because uh, they can clean up all the sources you have and just kind of fold it and make them go away. So this list just isn't forever. Like if I was in another scene, like here or here, I could click on these, like if I clicked on this and this, I could right click, I'll right click down here. Maybe you could see it and it's off screen. And it says group selected item up above. You would group them and then it would put them in a group. However, they're a little tricky. If you want to put that group into another scene, if you edit that group, it changes whatever scene it's in. So it's a little tricky. Like if you move a source outside of it, a little tricky. Back in the fake webcam. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to set up my green screen real quick and show you how I use this. So you see, got my green screen, Canon cam, fake webcam. Go into Canon cam, gotta go in here. I've already got my green screen filters. So when I just turn that on, boom, there it went. So now I gotta go into my full webcam and crop it. To the green screen extents the screen extents there we go and now i just turn on whatever background i have i've got this patio background i've got a yellow uh, my regular background I've got a gray 
got a red and then i've got like crazy things like i'm in a parking garage or i'm on a gondola <laughs> you know at a restaurant you get the idea or this is a wall i built at home um and just took a photo of and put it in here so it's pretty cool uh and in this group i could just hide it away so it's not just taking up a bunch of room that's and then there's no background you want to do no background and whatever is behind me is you know behind me So yeah, like I said, I use groups just for um, my green screen uh, that I use for backgrounds and thumbnails. And sometimes if I feel like streaming with it, um, once you figure out using CMS and groups properly, it can be hugely beneficial to making your OBS feel less cluttered. Hopefully this helped and let me know down in the comments below if this did help you out or if you have any other creative ways that you use scene nesting or groups in OBS. And I did do a video on how to make any microphone sound the best it can using the free built-in filters uh, in OBS. And so I'm going to link to that here. So please check it out. And if you like the music I have playing in the background, that's on Spotify called Stream Tunes Lo-Fi Beats. Check it out. It's uh, copyright free. You can use it in the background of your streams, YouTube videos, what have you. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Stream easy.